Okay, greetings everyone. How are you doing today? This is Patty Bennett. I am super excited that you have joined me today. We are going to be creating these beautiful backgrounds on these cards today. I am excited to bring you a fun crafting video every Friday. I am so glad that you're joining me. So if you see the little red live button up there, then you know that you have found me live. And it is, let's see, it is Friday, February 19th today. And if you're looking for all these projects, they will be on my blog, pattystamps.com, tomorrow the 20th and Sunday the 21st. That was kind of fun when I was writing that um, date. It was like 22121. 21. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> So yay! I am so glad that you are all here. Welcome everyone that is joining me live. So excited to share these cards with you. Alrighty, so you might be wondering, well, what did I use to make these really pretty backgrounds? I had these two on my blog, excuse me, on my Facebook page yesterday and again this morning with a reminder that we would be going live. And I thought these would be a fun teaser, but I also made this set of four cards with the same technique and the same supplies. So I hope you are excited to see how these are created and do a little crafting today. Yay! So I think we are just about at the top of the hour for our live. And if you're watching a replay, totally fine. I welcome you. And if you want to comment or ask a question on the live, I should be able to see that. If you are commenting later on a replay, then I try to go back and read all the comments, but sometimes I miss them. So feel free to jump over to pattystamps.com and to use my contact button if you have a question or need something from me, because I don't always see the uh, comments on a replay. So this is Patty Bennett. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I have been a demonstrator for almost 26 years, if you can even believe that. How amazing is that? That is so fun. And I recently, or a year ago, celebrated $2 million in career sales. I'm coming up on $2.3 million very soon. And uh, speaking of that, if you need any of these supplies, you can go to pattystamps.com and use the shop online buttons, and then you can purchase if you are interested. I also offer free catalogs if you don't have another demonstrator that you work with. So... Without further ado, let's look at the supplies. These are the stencil. Well, I call them stencils. Stampin' Up! calls them masks. These are the three that I used on our cards today. And you can also see over here my blending brushes. I used blending brushes, and then I used these four colors of ink pads to match the background paper. And if you're thinking, well, what is that paper? What did you use? I used the Oso oh Ombre paper. This is what I used for the backgrounds. So if you have not seen this in the Celebration catalog, this is what the patterns look like. So we have Rococo Rose, we have Bermuda Bay, we have Granny Apple Green, and Blackberry Bliss. And one side has this beautiful ombre gradient pattern. And then this side um, has the same ombre gradient, but with little fun little polka dot circles. So that is the pack. And you can get all 48 sheets free with a $50 online order. But this is ending on February 28th. So we have less than 10 days left for this. But that is what I used to create these backgrounds. I also pulled out the Touch of Ink set, which is another celebration item, and that's what I used on this card. I feel actually kind of guilty because 
I really had not used this set very much yet. There are so many new products to use that I had not been using this very much. I had used the Beautiful Greetings, but I finally pulled out these beautiful flowers and the hummingbird to use on this card. I was like, gosh, what, what is wrong? Why haven't I been using this? <laughs> then I also used the Art Gallery set for that set of four cards. You've seen me use this many times. This is one of my favorites, and that is what I used for the flowers on those four cards. And then I also used this Delicate Petals set, and I love the greetings in here. I love what they say, and I also love the mix of the fonts, and so that is what I used for my greetings. And all of these supplies will be linked tomorrow on the 20th, February 20th, on my blog. If you need a little refresher or you need to know exactly how to order them. So let's jump in and let's create a couple of these backgrounds so I can show you. Let's, let's do this one. I can show you what I did. So this would be the Bermuda Bay piece of ombre paper in the background and the polka dot stencil. Oh, and I was going to show you on page 146 in the annual catalog is where you will find these stencils. It's a set of four in addition to the three that you saw me using uh, on those card samples I just showed you. There's also this one that has uh, kind of uh, what, what tree background? Yeah, tree trunks, branches, I guess that's what you'd call it. And I'll show you what happened when I tried this technique with that. It didn't turn out so great. So that's why I used the other three. It's called Basic Pattern Decorative Masks. Now, if you crafted back in the 80s like I did, you called these stencils. So if you hear me use the word stencil, I am referring to the masks. And I'm sorry, I just like old habits die hard. Is that what you might say, right? <laughs> So you'll find it handy to either have some washi tape or painter's tape or whatever you like to use for um, holding down paper when you are crafting. So I am going to put a little piece of washi tape onto that designer paper. And then I'm just going to line up. These happen to both be six by six, so that works really nice. And I am going to put a couple of pieces and I'm putting them down here towards the bottom and I'll show you why as I start adding the ink. I mean I'll explain why. This is just some retired washi tape that I had. That's probably pretty shiny. That's cute, huh? Okay, so we have that. We're going to use the Bermuda Bay ink pad and if you've seen me using the blending brushes before, on other projects which we've done I like to have this little scratch paper handy this is just the 8x8 Stamparatus grid pad if you just have you know a different um, scratch paper that's completely fine too but what I like to do is when I dab my brush onto my ink pad I like to tap it first onto scratch paper just to make sure that it's not like super overly saturated or it's not too dry or whatever. So that's why I have that. You could do it right here, but then you're just going to start muddying up your whole paper. So do that. Just kind of make sure that it's not uh, too dry or too wet. Kind of sounds like Goldilocks. <laughs> and what I did is what I started in the, the lower and I went upwards because just like the paper is darker towards the bottom and gets lighter at the top, that's the effect I also wanted on my polka dots. So I'm letting the ink basically just run out as I go towards the top. And when I lift it, you will see that we have darker polka dots at the bottom and then they just get fairly light up at the top. That's the effect that I wanted. If you would prefer to do a heavy coat everywhere, totally fine. Does not matter at all. But you can see here how they're a little bit more defined down here and they fade towards the top. That's exactly what I wanted. 
So what you can do is you can peel up your washi tape and you can lift your mask and you can see if you got the effect you wanted. And it's kind of like the Stamparatus. You could put it back down. You could add more ink if you felt like there was something that you wanted to do a little more. Oh, and I told you that the reason I, I would tell you why I put the washi tape down at the bottom, because I started down here at the bottom and I worked my way up. It was kind of wanting to push that this mask or this stencil. So by anchoring it down here, it wasn't allowing that stencil to move. If I would have only put washi tape up here on the stencil, then it would wanted to have kind of lifted up down here. So that's why. And sorry, I told you I would tell you the reason and then I forgot to tell you, but I remembered. So there we go. So that is our background piece. Very simple, very fun. These brushes just are like a dream. They just glide. They're wonderful. A tip on cleaning this off, if you wanted to go to another color or um, just store it away, I just have this, I had a plastic bag handy. I laid it on there. I grabbed a baby wipe. And I just wiped and that took the ink off. If you are near a sink, you can always just wipe it off in the sink. That works totally great, but I am not quite near a sink here. I don't have a sink in my craft room, so that's what I did. And then it's cleaned off and ready for a new color or ready to put it away. So there we have our beautiful polka dot gradient piece of background paper and then all I did was with my trimmer I trimmed it down because I wanted uh, four inches by five and a quarter so I first did a four inch section and then I trimmed down here and then I just flipped it and I did five and a quarter and that allowed me to have my background piece with the white border on my top fold, thick basic white card base, like that. So that's really all there is to this. Isn't that fun? And then what I decided to do was to use those art gallery flowers and mainly because I had a box of them sitting here. Um, here it is. So I had a box of leaves and flowers that I wanted to use up. And that's why I did it with these. You could do anything on top. But those two have the polka dots. So you have the Rococo Rose and you have the um, Bermuda Bay for those two. And then I did the two others. So let's look at the two other patterns that I used. So this one... I don't know what you call that kind of a Baroque pattern. Even though this is Blackberry Bliss on the paper, I did Rich Razzleberry on the ink. I didn't want it really, really, really dark. My Blackberry Bliss pad is super, super dark. So I decided that it would be best to just go one shade lighter. So that's that one. And then this one is the Granny Apple Green. And I don't know if you noticed what I did on these cards to finish them off, but I used the Stitched So Sweetly rectangles. They're scalloped. So this is a larger one, and then these three are the same size. They're a little smaller. And I just turned them in different directions, put them in different places, stamped my greeting, Again, if you missed the beginning, that was from the Delicate Petals set. I used the greetings in Delicate Petals. And then I just added the stems and leaves and the flowers. Of course, I always have my Wink of Stella and 
when I'm done, I just flick like this and I flick Wink of Stella onto the flowers. And then I added either enamel dots or some kind of rounds or pearls or whatever, just to kind of enhance and finish them off. So like that's really, that's it. They were really fun to make. Um, oh, I see somebody was probably asking the ruler. Yes, Amazon, if you, and thank you, uh, Jacqueline, it was answering. If you search on Amazon for reverse self-adhesive ruler, that's what you'll find. It's longer than this. I just cut it off. But I like to be able to see the numbers when I put my paper onto the trimmer. So that's what I did on there. And let's see if there were other questions. Oh, hi, Patricia. Happy birthday. Let's see. Any other? Oh, that would be fun, Doris. She said before I clean off the stencil when there's ink on there, I could press it down onto another piece of cardstock and get sort of a reverse image. That would be very cool. Thanks for that suggestion. Let's see. Okay, sorry, I'm just scrolling back to watch any of the live comments to see if there was a question. Oh, the sprinkle. It's called Wink of Stella. So this is a brush tip, and there is a glittery solution in here that normally, let me just grab this uh, scrap. So normally you would use it to brush onto a project. And so let's see, I hope you can see that it's it's glittery, it's shiny, but it's not loose glitter. It's like painting with glitter. So that's normally what you would do with it. But what I love to do, instead of taking the time to like color on top of everything, I just do this. So I put the tip in the cap and then I flick down and it makes little speckles all over if you don't want it on your background, you would do it on your die cut flowers before you apply them. But I just, when I was done, I was just like all the way across on all of them. That's what I do. I do that on almost every color card. Uh, colors of ink on the Rococo Rose. This one, so this is interesting. Um, I did use the Rococo Rose. I stamped it on the Rococo Rose um uh ombre paper sorry gosh i don't know what happened to my brain for a second <laughs> so that's why you see a different color in the background and then on this one i did the mary merlot and i think the center is blackberry bliss so just kind of a little bit different look instead of repeating the um the rococo rose yeah, so that, that's how I did those that set of four. And I really liked this. I don't know, do you like those? I think they're really cute. The scalloped rectangle and then turning them different ways and putting them in different places so that these are not identical, but they are like a nice set of four. I thought they turned out super pretty. Thank you, glad you like them. Let's look at those other two. So we have this one with the butterfly set, and I showed you that, um, was it, it was last week, I think, on my live, we did all the butterfly cards. So on that one, let, well, let's look at that one first. So on that one, oh yes, and I have to show you the, um, kind of the oops, or the, what I wouldn't, what I would not do <laughs> with that fourth stencil. So you can see here that I just stamped the butterflies directly onto the Blackberry Bliss ombre piece. And here is that large butterfly brilliance, butterf yeah, butterfly brilliance. It's one big background stamp. So that's what I did. I just used my Rich Razzleberry ink, stamped it right on there, and they all die cut out all at once. And so then I could just put them back on top of the stenciled um, polka dot piece. So that's all there was to that one. Very simple. And again, delicate petals greeting 
worked perfectly right on that circle. And I love this. Sometimes something wonderful happens to someone who absolutely deserves every good thing. I love that. I love that. So that was that one. And then I have these to use on something else. And I did speckle them with the Wink of Stella on that card. So that was that. And then let's look at the oops before we look at the last card. So this is the fourth stencil in that basic patterns set. And it started to kind of work okay. But when I was stenciling here in the center, these started to wiggle. You can see that these are kind of delicate, right? They're, they're very thin. There's no support like through the middle. And so what happened was this started to really blur because this would move as I was adding the ink. So, um, yeah, I, I abandoned this one. But maybe if you used a sponge or you can spritz, you know, you can use your spritzers with ink in them and alcohol or water. And if you did that method, I think it would turn out better. But I just abandoned this for this series of cards. <laughs> uh, which stamp pad is the Butterfly Bouquet on? It's the Rich Razzleberry ink. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying these. Thank you. Oh, fog in the woods. Okay, we'll go with that. Jason says that it looks like it's fog in the woods. Let's do that. Maybe I could make something out of this and we'll pretend that it's a foggy scene. I love that. <laughs> okay. Oh, put a glue dot. That's a great idea, Mary Ellen. So she is saying maybe put a little adhesive or a glue dot under those center sections so that when you are using the brush and the ink, then it doesn't move. That's a great idea. Yeah, maybe some kind of uh, temporary adhesive. I think I think I might have something like that that would work. Thank you for that suggestion. Oh, not the ink. Okay, Doris, I'm not sure what you're asking. Sorry. Can you re-ask your question about the butterflies? Ha, huh, Bay Area Fog, right, Lori? That's a good one. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like that. All right, so let's look at this one. And this is the beautiful set called A Touch of Ink. And it is also a celebration set. Hang on, I'm trying to pick up these extra hummingbirds and they were not cooperating. So let's just look at the supplies here. So a touch of ink is one of the celebration sets. So this is a free choice with your $100 order before the end of February. So let's look at it in the catalog. I think here it is. So it's on page 12 and 13, and this is the set. And something to note, I've mentioned this before, but when you're looking at, at some of the photopolymer sets, they're not always shown at real size. So it says down here that it is shown at 65%. And let me just show you the difference. So if we take out this sheet where we have the hummingbird, you can see the difference. That's the real actual size, but it looks like it's very tiny. So if you're looking at this and you're trying to plan a project, I don't want you to think, oh, that's going to fit on a little tiny die cut because no, look, it's large. It's very big. And then the flowers and the leaves, of course, and butterfly are all larger than what's on the cover. It always gets me. I'll look at a greeting and think, oh, that's really little. And I get, I get, get out a little die cut and it's like, oh, that doesn't fit. <laughs> so yes, if you have a $100 online Stampin' Up! order before the end of February, you could select the set. So I stamped some extra hummingbirds and I actually used, there's this piece right here that matches the outline. So I stamped first in Granny Apple Green, and then I just used a couple of my Stampin' Blends to add a little bit of blue. That's what I did to color this one. 
And then you can see that on one of those stitched so sweetly die cuts, I stamped the flower three times and I colored it with my Stampin' Blends. It may be um, hard to see, but around the flower, I used my light pool party Stampin' Blend marker and just sort of highlighted. And it's a fun way to kind of help pop your image off the white paper. Let's see, I'm going to just, excuse me, look back at the, um, sorry, I'm looking at the comments. Yeah, so brushing just one direction, and I think you're probably referring to the issue I was having with this. I tried that. I really tried to just sort of do that. And this it's this middle piece right here. It just wiggles. It's too skinny. So I like the idea of the temporary adhesive. I think that would be a good suggestion. Yes, yes. Butterflies are coming for customers on March 1st. You can watch my live from last week or look at my blog this week. I blogged all about that. Um, yep, the stamping block is the largest one. It is F. That's what I used on the butterflies. Or you can use your Stamparatus. And yes, Touch of Ink is a beautiful set. Oh, I agree. It's beautiful. Yes, and also you could spray. Yes, definitely. I was showing that. You could use any of... Uh-oh. I'm not even going to look at what just fell down. It's behind me. <laughs> I don't want to look. You could use a Stampin' Spritzer with ink and um, you could also put some Wink of Stella or Shimmer Paint or whatever you want in there and you could spritz as well. Oh dear. Okay. Ah, let's see. What color blends did I use on the flowers? This is Light Petal Pink both shades of Calypso Coral and Light Poppy Parade. <laughs> if I don't look, it didn't happen. Yeah, I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look till we're done. <laughs> um, I did take a picture of the colors of blends that I used, and I will be happy to post that. That should be on my blog tomorrow on February 20th. So back to the stencil, that's the background, and it's this one that kind of looks like, um, I don't know, would you call that a Baroque pattern? I, I think that would kind of be the right word. And I just did Granny Apple Green on the Granny Apple Green Oso oh Ombre paper, let it fade out, and then I, I wasn't sure, this was an experiment, what I did down on this lower part, can you see it's slightly a different color? I used garden green and I just sort of let them blend and really it doesn't even really doesn't hardly show but I did do it I just added a little bit of different touch of color on there oh what happens if the thing that fell is leaking I better look um, it's not leaking it's all my butterfly samples <laughs> but hang on because they're under the wheel. There we go. Sorry, they were under the wheel of my rolling desk chair. And had I rolled back, I would have rolled on top of all my beautiful butterfly samples. Okay, thank you, Katie. I'm done now. We're okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Donna says she that her dog has learned that the sound of an avalanche in her scrap room. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Oh dear, she got beaned one time. Oh my goodness. Uh, um, Anne is asking about the ink pad. So Granny Apple Green and Garden Green is what I was saying for this. All right. Um, if someone could type into Anne, all of the closed captioning happens when the video is done. And it's also going to be on my YouTube channel later today with uh, the closed captioning. So uh, there's nothing I can do to put it on a Facebook Live. I'm sorry. But if someone could type that into Anne, maybe that would be helpful. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I thanks, Teresa. I don't like my laugh. 
<laughs> she says that I have the best laugh and it makes you happy. I'm glad because I don't like my laugh. I think it's embarrassing and I just get so giggly because I get excited anyway. So does anybody have questions? Do you want to see anything in more detail? Was there anything you wanted me to go over again? I'm happy to do that. But otherwise, that's just basically what I wanted to show you was using the masks and the blending brushes. And yeah, it's a great background. I just love it on the ombre paper. I just think it turns out really fun. And I think it's just a fun, easy way to make backgrounds. So any questions on those, I would be happy to hang out and answer questions or go over anything if you have questions. I'll just show you those again, just in case that sparked something that you wanted to know. And if there's anything you'd like to see on these weekly crafting videos, let me know so that I can add it to my list. I'd be happy to um, show you something that you're interested in. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I love it when you send up hearts. It makes me so happy. I'm watching over here on my iPad. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're enjoying these. Oh, you are welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I don't see any other questions coming through. I know there's a little delay with the... um the live, but, oh, let's see, what color blends did you use on the yellow flower on the right? Um, no blends. This is just ink pads. So this stamp set is a three, three step stamp. So I did this one with the, um, mango melody. I did this one on top, a little more detail with pumpkin pie. And then this little one is in the center also with pumpkin pie, but no Stampin' Blends, just the ink pad. So it would be the pumpkin pie and the mango melody would be the ink pads that I used on this one. The half die cutting technique. Okay, I will have to add that to my list. Thank you for that suggestion. Thank you. I am glad that you are enjoying these and that this was helpful. I just had fun making these yesterday. Yay. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, yes, happy colors. I think they're all really happy colors. I tried to hit sort of all the spectrum of the rainbow there. <laughs> Okay, well, I will let you go. Have a wonderful weekend, a lovely rest of your day. Thank you for joining me on Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And I hope you have some crafting time carved out for this weekend. I will see you next week live, and I hope that you'll visit me every day at pattystamps.com. Thank you again. Bye.